right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we are gonna continue our discussions, but before we do, I wanna remind you guys that you guys can find us on all the social medias, squad state. <laughs> <laughs> had to like sneeze, but I tried to like hold it in and there was this weird like cough sneeze <laughs> that happened. I apologize. But you can find us on our socials um, at Squad State on Twitter, Instagram, as well as make sure to check out our website, squadstate.com. And we'll talk more about that at the end of this episode. But for now, we got to move on because uh, Square Enix made some exciting news um, last week, and I believe Steve is gonna get Absolutely. us up to date. Um, yeah, last week on Thursday, they hosted what would now be known as like their first Square Enix Presents, weird name, but that aside. Uh, and this was basically their digital uh, showcase just to talk about you know new announcements and then kind of uh, talk about uh, upcoming games. One in particular, I know we have a lot to say about, so. We'll get there. We'll get there, everyone. Stay patient. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just want to go over some quick uh, notable highlights that I found interesting anyways was obviously Outriders, uh, which is coming out on April 1st, got a new trailer just hyping everyone up. Um, earlier that week, it was also confirmed by Microsoft that it's coming to Xbox Game Pass day and date. So April 1st, you know, if you're on, playing on Game Pass, you can just jump in. Otherwise, yeah, PlayStation, PC, all that, uh, just a couple weeks, so... Mm -hmm. If you're interested, yeah, it's coming out real soon. Yeah. We yeah. uh we talked a little bit in the break about how I like I played the demo and it was mm -hmm. just it was just too much like cutscenes trying to get you into a story that didn't feel quite there. Sure. And I also didn't play a lot of the game because that seemed I didn't play a lot of the demo because that seems like a very destiny grindy kind of game. So right. I don't necessarily want to grind in a demo when I'm gonna gonna re be replaying some of the same content. Well, Keep in mind, they did say that every all the progress will transfer over. Oh, so if that, okay. that, that makes you want to go back, mm -hmm. maybe. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, on top of that, they they announced uh, the Tomb Raider Definitive Survival Trilogy, which is the a bundle for uh, the reboot, essentially, uh, which is cool if anyone's never played it. It's discounted 60% off. Which is. I mean, how has no one played Tomb Raider? At this point, if you have not played Tomb Raider because there's been so yeah. many Ooh, definitive man. editions, it's like you're just not interested. So that's fine. <laughs> but if 60% off. All don't three games, say you want to play. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's going to get you in. Yeah. That's like true. $20 to play yeah. three games. Come on. Try it out, at least. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, one announcement I was really excited for was Life is Strange True Colors. I'm a huge fan of the Life is Strange franchise, mm -hmm. and just seeing this overhauled engine uh, in motion uh, blew me away. I'm super excited for this game coming out September 10th. Non episodic, so the full game's dropping that day on all platforms, which is going to be nice. I know a lot of people are totally over that episodic uh, style of releasing games, and I don't blame you. It's, it's a little it's a little rough and then on top of that if you get the uh ultimate edition of that game the life is strange remastered collection is free otherwise you can buy it for uh, buy it standalone uh later this fall so mm -hmm. yeah lots of life is strange content and then finally uh forspoken i mean yes i know i know malik you're <laughs> you and me right, dragon? To, <laughs> right? <laughs> What a oh line! My God. <laughs> and and also too, this is just like a minor thing. It, it I know this was just a trailer, mm -hmm. but the lighting on her skin was perfect. Yeah. I am so tired of crappy lighting and shading on darker mm -hmm. color skin because it just ends up blocky and pixelated, and it just yeah. doesn't look right. And the fact that they are able to do dynamic lighting on a dark character skin still have her stand out in a very uh like desaturated world that was super impressive to me because there was a lot of little like highlights and tones that they used and a lot of subtleties that they used to really make her stand out and mm. i'm just excited to see what they do with this project it seems like they're not trying to go for like a super in-depth fantastical thing i mean we talked about this steve is the comedy already yeah. there for it yeah yeah it seems like they're they're setting a good tone it's not gonna be like super serious like it's not deep fan fantasy lore like you might see in like game of thrones or something it seems like they're they're at least acknowledging you know 
that we can have a game where someone's like, wow, that's a dragon. <laughs> and it'd be like this, this yeah. moment for the character. But I agree. You know, th this game really reminded me of that Unreal Engine 5 tech demo that they showed for PlayStation, where it's like, how is this mm, even a game? Yes. Um, <laughs> And that, that, that's the vibe I got from yeah. the, from Forspoken. And yeah, next year, which is super, super soon for this game. I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what? I think my problem with like medieval-ish stuff, usually it takes exactly. itself super serial. Yeah, super serial. <laughs> um, so so I, super, super serial. Um, so I'm really happy that there's humor in it. Um, I feel like it's going to be able to make fun of like the yeah. genre as well. And it just looks beautiful like really beautiful um i want to go back though to life yeah. is strange for a second they're not doing yeah. episodic anymore right That's correct. so why why do you think that they they made that you know decision what? i think it really came down to life is strange too where correct me if i'm wrong someone in the audience could can probably point it out but i believe that there were a couple delays in between episodes that you know were just out of the developer's hands and stuff mm. like that you know I'm, how game development goes and at that point i think that they saw that effect within the community where they're like well you know i, I played episode one and two but now i'm waiting four months for episode three i don't even know yeah. what the story is at this point like I, i'm assuming that they have like actual an analytics and data showing that people just either dropped off or were just not as invested mm. i think it's also hard yeah to run. Like you gotta think they they instead of running one big marketing campaign for a game you're running four mini marketing sure. campaigns plus one big marketing uh, campaign for the launch and you got to keep like that the the man hours i think too especially with the in a covid world i think they just want to keep it simple and just kind of release it all to do big one one big campaign yeah just like yeah. put it out there um because like i feel like now episodic adventures like are they are they done for like we had right. Telltale Games, right? And they were doing that. Life is Strange. I wonder if Life is Strange is going to continue this for going forward. You're talking you know, about forward. those type of games in general, are they done for? Um, With Episodic. Or, like Episodic, or, yeah. Or, yeah, rather rather than rather than coming out of Episodic, but instead just coming out all at once. Yeah. Well, I guess it's a question of like when you watch mm -hmm. TV, you know, like would you rather something like a WandaVision that comes out week to week or mm -hmm. the Netflix style of being able to binge everything on the day? Yeah. I wonder, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I was just gonna say, I don't know how many of you guys played uh, Tell Me Why from, from Don't Not, but they experimented with like a much more reeled in one where they had the full game completed, but they just re uh, released it weekly. So it was three episodes uh, spread across a month. And I, I thought that was okay. pretty good. It, it reminded mm -hmm. me, yeah, going back to, you know, this this episodic nature of like WandaVision or now Falcon and Winter Soldier, where it's like, OK, I can at least keep up with that rather than try and maintain the story threads of a, a two hour game over the course of four months, right. five months. Right. Right. Until the next episode comes out. So it's it's definitely more difficult in the sense of Life is Strange where they have delays and stuff, because it's like, you know, then then you start having quite a bit of time between yeah. episodes where you could forget about some plot thread or like some through lines and stuff. And I know that, I mean, I don't know about Life Restraint specifically, I haven't played it, but I know that when I played The Walking Dead, they always give you like the previously on, the little refresher. Yep. Uh, yeah. And I'm assuming they do the same with Life is Strange. They so do. like that could, that could always help, but still it being like four months between an episode, you may even get to a point where you're not interested anymore. And know? that's just it, especially- so so do we think episodic doesn't work for video I think games necessarily? Works, but I think in the sense of just like what you were saying, Steve, with uh, with the game is tell me why, right? Yeah, that's where right. when they they know they have the game completed, then they release it episodic. Yeah, you know, then they can say, okay, here, let's we, mm. we got this all done. Like over short, yeah, shorter exactly. period of time. You know, mm. I, think, I think it's also okay. really hard when you have a game like Life is Strange or even going back to the Telltale games where you have to put yourself in a certain mindset of like, who who am I playing? Like, what is this uh, this character I'm playing as? Why am I making these certain decisions, right? Like you have to right. keep up with that. And I, I feel like, mm. yes, they have those uh, recaps, but that doesn't recap why you made a certain decision of like why you betrayed someone or why you aligned with someone else, right? I think that's a that's a really big hurdle to to overcome as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was I was just wondering what yeah, you guys yeah, thought. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. because I felt like but yes, continue um and, Yeah, and then, with then we got the, the whole big one, Square the one Enix I'm presents. Sure a lot of yeah. us have a lot to say, uh, which is the Marvel's Avengers uh I guess the the I see caboose yeah, like head down. Was the content roadmap. <laughs> uh the Square Enix presents was debuted on the day that uh Hawkeye Future and Perfect came out on consoles yeah. along with next gen upgrades and uh, small, you know, tweaks to the game as well. Uh, but yeah, they highlighted what to expect over the course of spring and summer. So I'll just quickly go through it. Uh, aside from the Hawkeye, uh, we've got the uh, Tachyon Anomaly, which is uh, the rip missions will appear more often and be scaled for power levels one through 100. And in addition to that, they're also allowing people to uh, play as doubles within a strike team for certain missions. So for instance, you can play as like two Iron Men and two Black Widows or four Hulks or whatever. Yeah. Um, which is yeah. cool, you weren't be able to uh, do that before. After that, they have an event called the Red Room Takeover, which is unique harm, room, uh, harm rooms, uh, which unlock you know unique outfits is what to, they say. Uh, to elaborate on that one, uh, yes. I, I was able to have a sit down with, uh, with Chris Dynamics. Oh, a couple of yeah. other creators were able to have a sit down with Chris Dynamics. And uh, this is supposed to be a bit of a cross promotion with the Black Widow film. Oh, I see. Um, Elena okay. Belova is the one mm. who kind of takes over the harm room and creates like like a trap dungeon almost, which seems pretty cool. Oh, that's interesting. Um, okay. Yeah, and it's meant to be like not necessarily in terms of narratively a cross promotion with the Black Widow film, but just because it's like it'll coincide with the release of the Black Widow film and involve characters, of course, from that movie in you know, Elena Belova. I think that's the pronunciation of the name. I think so. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to, to yeah. jump in and mention that because I did have that sit down with Crystal Dynamics and they gave a little bit of insight as to what's coming and what exactly it is. They've contextualized it. So I'll uh, I'll no, jump in as you continue. Yeah. No, please do, because that, that makes a lot more sense. Because when, when yeah. I heard about this, I was like, OK, so are they just going to like reskin the harm rooms? Like, right. is that it? But that, that makes a lot more sense. Um, yeah. fo following that, uh, they have an event called the Cosmic Cube where Monica uh, will be given a villain sector as the scientist supreme. Mm. Um, and this also plays into if you guys have played the the Hawkeye DLC, this kind of plays into the narrative that they're building up uh, towards. Following that, now we've kind of hit the the summer mark uh, yeah. of their roadmap is the uh, Wasteland Patrol Hawkeye DLC introduced the new uh, Wasteland biome, if you will, and uh, the Patrol is a new mode uh, that's essentially like an open like an open world sandbox kind of thing, yeah. where instead of jumping into an area to only complete missions uh you can jump in just to uh do your daily assignments without having to jump back in and out and go through loading screens and stuff like that which is nice uh and then finally i guess the big one the one that we've all been waiting for is the war for war for wakanda expansion they call it an expansion which they don't call anything else so that kind of gives you an idea of how big this will be so it's going to introduce black panther introduce new hero outfits uh power level cap increase new villains including claw uh, new faction villains, story. Or... Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Villains, yes, good one. Um, and then the new uh, Wakanda jungle biome and new yep. outposts. On top of all that, you've got the, uh, these will be like sprinkled in throughout Omega level threat missions, multiplayer mega hives, post uh, level 50 progression, and then outfits inspired by the MCU. And then of course, like all your regular tuning and uh, tweaking. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, you pretty much broke it down perfectly. Wasteland Patrol is the other thing I was going to jump in on, but sure. you explained it just as it was. Um, like it's essentially supposed to be a little more of like a a mode that provides you more freedom, right? Um, and the patrol mode in general as a war zone mission type is going to be something that comes to different biomes. I think they're starting off with the wasteland, yeah, because it's their newest biome. And yeah, it's essentially that you jump into the wasteland. It's a bit of a more wide open area, and there's no set objective. You just kind of go out. You can find some enemies, find your own objectives. Mm -hmm. and jump out of there whenever you're done essentially um yeah. which probably like you know if you want to just level up your characters if you want to even just like roam around and have a little bit of fun if you don't want to play whatever the other warzone mission types there are in the game you can just jump in and do the patrol mode which i think is great this should have been something that was in the game from the get-go but obviously i mean everyone's just waiting for black panther of course and i will say i'm glad we got the roadmap i'm glad we get to see at least some content coming i am surprised that there's only one character here. Um, yeah. And I think yeah. my yeah. surprise mainly comes from the fact that we had Kate Bishop and Hawkeye, even with the delay of Hawkeye, so close to one another. Um, it, it surprised me because I thought that maybe they had more characters coming down the line. Like I'm wondering, 
what's going on with Spider-Man? Spider-Man was supposed to be early 2021. Yeah. Are we even still getting that DLC at some point? Like, there's no update on it. No look at the character. We got to look at Black Panther. And the fact that in the roadmap it says summer and beyond, I'm pretty sure the Black Panther DLC falls in the category of the beyond. Beyond. So I'm assuming we're going to see that. Like next year no, well, or beyond. We're probably going to see it fall of this year. Right. Uh, that, that's and don't get delayed. Um, but <laughs> damn. They'll get delayed. So, yeah, probably. They'll probably get probably. delayed. Especially yeah, they'll probably get the delayed. The roadmap says that the roadmap may change and does not include all in yeah. progress work. So, like, you know, they literally like their little fine print covering their own back. But at the same time, so I had this sit down with Crystal Dynamics, uh, myself and a couple of other creators. We had mm -hmm. the opportunity to to essentially get like a look at this the day before they unveiled it. Um, mm -hmm. And they also just explained a bit about, you know, being a little more transparent with the community and that their communication with the community hasn't been the best. Um, and they mentioned that that's something that they want oh. to improve on. But at the same time, they did say like, wow. listen, we want to bring you guys new content, but we have to make sure that fixing the game is prioritized, which like you could tell, like you didn't, like I didn't need them to say that. I know that that's something more so for the fans or people like that who are just, who are a little loud. Mm -hmm. um, but like that is the way that it is unfortunately these are unprecedented times for yep. anybody in any yeah. industry working during covid has not been easy for anyone um and of course making a game while everyone's working from home and having qa testers needing to receive builds for a game that are like 60 to 70 gigabytes it's all just not ideal you know and so for them to have to launch a game that is meant to be a game as a service with content that's planned for years to come all of it just didn't work out in their favor uh, and they said, like, listen, we need to prioritize fixing the bugs in this game. And because of that, when we release these new content pieces, they have to be in the best shape possible. Of course. And, and they said that in that, we have to take our time, um, which should have been what was communicated from the get go. Uh, it's unfortunate that it took this long because I feel mm. like a lot of people have dropped off on this game because of that. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to the Black Panther DLC. I want to play it. I'm looking forward to seeing what these MCU outfits are going to look like. Mm -hmm. I, can't believe that enough people had to request that for it to become a thing. I don't know why that wasn't a thing from the get go. Um, but other things like like tag the tachyon anomaly. Why is that an anomaly? Just make that a permanent thing in the game now. You know, right. I didn't I didn't think it was that big of a deal that we couldn't have everyone playing as the same character. I thought it was cool that like everyone could play as one specific character. I thought that that was fun. But I feel like now that they're going to add it into the game, make it a permanent thing. You know, like leave yeah. it in the game. Let that just be its own thing. Because now at least there can be some sort of variety there and that I can jump online with three other friends. We can all play like a crazy build of Iron Man and just wreck shop. There could be some fun videos or just some fun content to post online to come out of that. Um, and so hopefully they make that a permanent thing. They got a new villain coming, but it's a villain who's already been in the game since the get go. So I don't know how different of a boss battle that's gonna be. They're just, uh, this. it's good. We got a roadmap. We get to see what content is coming. I'm just not like thoroughly, like overly impressed yeah. with the content that's coming. Mm. And it's unfortunate because of the circumstances. So let, let me just ask you a question. Of course. Mm. Does, does a content roadmap mean anything when you're not sure <laughs> if it's even going to be coming? Yeah. I, like okay. it's hard it's hard to say but when you when you see those roadmaps with the fine print and the the track record so far of the avengers how do you have does this put more faith in the game for you or is it more of like a we still need to see it puts faith in that they're at least saying this is the content that's coming yeah. uh whether or not they reach mm -hmm. those dates i don't know but i'd rather take this than complete radio silence because they released the Kate Bishop DLC yes. and didn't say anything for two months about yeah. what's going to happen with their game and when the Hawkeye DLC was coming which was supposed to be a month apart from Kate Bishop's originally so yeah. like I'd rather take them saying hey here's what's coming here's what we have planned if we reach those dates great if we don't like hopefully they at least just immediately communicate that as well you know, but I'd again, I'd rather know what's on the way than know nothing at all. I'm 100 percent there with you. So, do you think? Do you think though, devil's okay. advocate here, um, that maybe they're sharing 
too much of a roadmap. Like you have, okay, look at what they've already done, the lack of trust that that community has. I feel like they need to kind of communicate, yes, these things are coming mm -hmm. eventually. This is what we're doing right now. Like, I don't think you have to go into detail about all that stuff for people to get excited about because it's probably gonna get delayed. If you know what's coming out in the next month, two months, announce that, talk about that. And we still are working on other improvements on the game. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's a bit late to get people's hopes up because of yeah. Black Panther when we probably won't I see argue, it this year. Delay or no delay, we needed this roadmap. I agree. Like, there, there had to have been uh, okay. some renewed faith for the already small community that's here. And even if, I mean, even if like say Red Room Takeover and everything past that is delayed a month or so, that's way better than just saying the Tachyon Anomaly, which is for all intents and purposes, reuse content that's already in the game to some extent being the only thing to look forward to. We, we needed to be excited for mm -hmm. this game. We needed to be like, okay, I'm going to play Hawkeye and I'm going to keep playing. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that going back to your actual point of like talking about sharing and oversharing, maybe I, I would argue that their whole thing with the XP tweak, that was a classic case of oversharing that shouldn't have been <laughs> talked about to begin with. Yeah. Because I don't know about you yeah. guys, if you guys have played the game since they've, uh, they tweaked it. That's like, a, that was nothing. Yeah, it wasn't even that big of a deal. Oh, no, they didn't, they didn't even I, I didn't deal. even jump they in. Shook and... up the entire community, even people that weren't playing it, giving wow. them an excuse to be like, haha, look at this game for <laughs> no yeah. reason. Yeah. Yes. And it's like, why? Why would you do that and then double down and go away and create a Reddit thread and talk about this and have so much, so much of an emphasis on this instead of just talking about the stuff that really matters? And I think that's the, that's the thing moving forward that they yeah. need to really concentrate on is talk about the things that matter for the community. Don't talk about these mundane mm -hmm. things that really have nothing to do with the game. Exactly. I don't need blog posts on the XP reworking anymore. I want to know about the new content that's coming to Marvel's Avengers and that's it. That's all I'm concerned about. Of course, bug fixes are important. You got to have patch notes. That's always big. But at the end of the day, bottom line, what everyone wants to know about this game is when are we going to get new characters? When are we going to get new areas to explore? Definitely some new enemy types. It's about time we get some new enemy types. I'm really like, I thought- Aim robots I, being zombies, busting oh, on the ground, they're here. I thought that I could deal with just robots, but man, like even just bring in Ultron, <laughs> the, give me new robots to fight, you know? Like yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm getting sick of it. Um, and, and it sucks because I don't want to harp on this game too much because having a sit down with the developers, having met some of the developers, I know that they're passionate and I know that they're not setting out to make a yeah. bad game. And they are working in real difficult conditions to make this game and to even put out new content. So I appreciate everything that they're doing, even like just to at all be putting out new content for the game is, is an achievement given the, the environment that they have to work in. But it's yeah. unfortunate because this game in general needed more time to cook. It needed more time in the oven and it came out half-baked. It was, it's, it just, it was, a, it was a problem at launch. You could clearly see that this game was first of all i don't even think it was meant for the last gen consoles because it mm -hmm. runs pretty well on the ps5 with the uh with the next gen upgrade um so i don't think it was even meant really for the last gen consoles yep. uh not as bad as cyberpunk but right not that great either um and then also like this game was just it was a buggy mess and because of how many bugs and glitches and issues it had at launch it delayed the new content, which was supposed to be kind of the saving grace of them putting out free content was that they would put it out so frequently that maybe people would want to buy suits. They want to buy the challenge cards. You know, they want to like invest their additional money in those little microtransactions, which I don't necessarily agree with, but mm -hmm. is their only avenue of making money. And now I've, have, I've had conversations with people because they streamed the Hawkeye DLC the other day. I didn't beat it, but I streamed it. And people were saying, yeah. do you think that Avengers could go free to play? and that they might make the expansions paid. And I can see that being the future of the game. I can see them going. That would be a it, smart it move. A smart move. I, I can also see, and we've talked about this a couple of times now, I can also see Square Enix not giving up on this because they didn't give up on something like Final Fantasy XIV mm -hmm. and look where it is now. They know that this is a massive True. IP and if they just keep working on it, they'll have something there. And Crystal Dynamics has been pretty reassuring in that they're dedicated to making this work. 
So I don't think we're going to have an Anthem scenario with Marvel's Avengers. Sure. But they got so much work to do. I just don't know if they're going to be able to. Yeah. And, and at a risk of, you know, us going along on this topic and everything, I, I know we want to move on, but I just wanted to say, although we were being very critical for good reason too, I just want to say that, like that Hawkeye DLC, I think they succeeded in everything that they promised. <laughs> um, I mean, the next gen improvements, nine day for that game mm-hmm. In, mm-hmm. In, in terms of like mm-hmm. performance and visuals, I, I think, I think it was a well-deserved and I'm glad to see it actually come out and actually change the game. And Hawkeye itself, what a fun character to play as. Yeah, I was shocked. So, he's, he is. Fun. I like. I think I like Kate Bishop more. I got to still oh, level him up and upgrade him. Okay, but I was starting to have a lot more fun with him once I was starting to level him up. But again, yeah. that brings the conversation of that first skill tree, that tab. I think we should just have that yep. unlocked. Like I think, at 100%. Some point, yes, from at the some start. Point, you want to yeah, play like I, w- I want to play the hero in his like fully upgraded form, and then start to worry about like how I want to change up some of the moves and, and abilities that he already has. You know. I, I think that, yeah. that down the line, that needs to become a thing for Marvel's Avengers. But but you know what? It's very hopeful that the DLC was good, that you know we know that the content coming will eventually be good. Just the time between, you know, we see Black Panther and That's, play yeah. as Black Panther. Um, will it be worth it? I don't know. We're, we're gonna have to keep watching that story, but I do want to move on. Just oh, sorry. Really quickly, yeah, go ahead. As someone who has never played Avengers yet, and someone watching all this news Hmm. my biggest worry with avengers going forward isn't even really like this content and other stuff i'm one of those people i'm fine with replaying old content even if it is shallow i don't see the characters that they're putting out really taking any risks or being intuitive or fun in the aspect of right you got the whole marvel avengers universe to work with we got kate bishop and hawkeye and then like even so i love black panther but that's not a super like like you could add martial arts and technology right but yeah. you're still following like that's almost black widow-esque so i want to see them take some characters like doctor strange mm. wanda vision even like winter soldier or falcon and do some interesting things because once they actually even spider-man just get some characters that feel unique look unique and, and kind of bring some new flavor to the the series that's what would draw me in well, we just imagine it, in, in the dream we'll have scenario, to, yeah. we had Falcon and Winter Soldier coming out as DLC to coincide with the show, you right. know, or Wanda, like Scarlet Witch and Vision coming to the game. Yeah. Well, that would be that. I think that would yeah. be dream, the dream goal. And that would be great marketing. If you have like the costume, the uh, original Wanda yeah, the costume, right? Um, that they showcase. Yeah, the Halloween costume from WandaVision there that you could get. Like that's where they need yeah. to get to. We know Marvel's not going anywhere. So hopefully they get to that point where they could align their releases with um, sure. other mediums of Marvel releases and like movies and TV shows. But again, we're going to we're going to have to uh, watch and see if Avengers impresses enough people for them to invest more right. time into it.